This is a sight we shall never see again. The last of Britain's long line of battleships, HMS Vanguard. She was laid down in the bleak days of 1941, when Allied victory in the Second World War was only a distant hope. By the time she was completed, the fighting was over and history had passed her by. Vanguard was the biggest battleship ever built in Britain, but most people remember her best as the ship which took King George VI and the royal family to South Africa in 1947. For Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret, there were strenuous deck games and a visit to the bridge to see how everything worked. After some years as flagship of the home fleet and a spell in reserve, Vanguard was condemned to be scrapped. Today, it's the aircraft carrier and the submarine on which sea power depends. She's assigned to a breaking yard in Scotland, but before starting out on her final voyage, her fittings are stripped and all those things that have made her a home are taken ashore. A skeleton crew is assembled, no more than 60 men compared with the 1,600 she normally carried. And on a summer's day, a flock of tugs descends on Portsmouth to take her in tow. But this ship, which never fought a battle, is reluctant to die. With a last defiant gesture, Vanguard shrugs her escort aside and settles down at the narrow entrance to the harbour. There she remains aground for almost an hour, as if to acknowledge the farewells of the holiday crowds who've come to see her depart. The tugs churn and strain, and at last the unwilling victim is dragged clear to the open sea. The struggle is recorded by a newspaper man who uses a special container to get his story ashore. Contact with the tugs is maintained by ship-to-ship -ship radio. Fog shrouds the melancholy cortege. Her engine's dead, with only the powerful beat of the tugs and the mournful cry of the foghorn to break the silence. Vanguard is like some ghost ship as she looms through the swirling mist. The journey is uneventful, with only a rare moment of excitement as one of the tow lines becomes fouled. Soon, the line is coupled up again and the procession reforms. In the echoing vastness of the empty ship, the crew welcomes an issue of rum. Off watch, there's a game of cricket beneath the 15-inch guns. The domestic chores have still to be done. Emergency rations are carried in case of mishap. But there's nothing emergency about this spread. The 600-mile tow takes five days. Now Vanguard comes home, back to the Clyde where she was cradled. Not to the builders this time, but to the biggest ship-breaking yard in the country. The key is handed over, and the breakers climb aboard. 
soon, there's the hiss of the oxyflame cutters as they begin to slice through the first of the big guns. Those guns which never fired a shot in anger. As they wave farewell, the sailors wonder why Vanguard has to die. Could she not be preserved as a memorial, as a historic building is preserved, or towed to sea for decent and honourable burial? But the earth is not so abundant in its raw materials that they can be locked away unused or recklessly squandered. A ship that moulders in idleness, a ship that's sunk, can serve mankind no further. But a ship that's reduced to its constituent parts, and that's the breaker's job, can begin life anew, its guns and its masts, its decks and its cabins, transformed into a hundred different things. Only for the pinups is there no future. Three hundred men faced the best part of two years to tear Vanguard apart. Ten times as many people were involved in her building. She cost the nation 11 million pounds. As scrap, she's worth perhaps a twentieth of that. The ship builder begins at the bottom and builds up. The ship breaker begins at the top and works down. After the masts and funnels and the bridge have been removed, the decks are opened up and the complex machinery and boilers are lifted out. Much of this machinery is of valuable copper and brass. More than a year and a half have passed now, and 30,000 tons of metal have been removed. Vanguard is a gaunt and hollow shell. From the breaking key, she's floated to the beaching ground, where what's left of her bowels will be cut away. As each section is removed, she'll be pulled further up the beach, until there is nothing of her left. But in the steelworks of Scotland and of Sheffield, she'll be reborn, transmuted into, who knows, a new ship perhaps, the framework for a factory or a block of flats. Furniture will be made from her timbers, bath mats from her cork. The first vanguard fought the Spanish Armada nearly 400 years ago in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. The last vanguard never fought at all, but like her forebears, she served her generation. And today, the greatness of which this mighty ship was a symbol finds new ways to express itself. <laughs>